Welcome to part three of our Django inventory management system. As uh, requested, I am going to be making a system that keeps track of cost of the items and will track profit and loss. So how would we do that? Well, picking up where we left off, we have transactions and we have an account on there. On our transactions, we have a quantity, and we have which account and what it's when it was created on. But we're going to need more than just the quantity if we're going to keep track of cost on each transaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep track of cost per unit. So that is the cost of every single one of these products, and that is going to be what's called a decimal field. Now, a decimal field is not like a float, except it's more accurate. So floats will fail at accuracy uh, and are not suitable. Remember, not suitable for a currency uh, related uh, thing um, because, uh, well, uh, you'll notice if you start to add floats together that they may not actually add up to accurate uh, uh, to the cent uh, number. So with a decimal field, we're going to decide a, uh, a number of how many digits it can be. Um, so let's say 10, because we're going to assume that, well, it could be wrong, but in this system that the maximum amount of digits that could be had are uh, 10, which would be quite a large number. And we're going to have a decimal places of 2. So that means that we can have a number that is 8 long, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 2 decimal places. So up to 8 uh, or some single digit millions uh, of cost per unit. Uh, if you're dealing with something that costs more than 7 figures per unit, uh, well, you're in a very good business and I encourage you to stay there. But uh, otherwise, this should probably be sufficient for our cost per unit. Um, secondly, we're going to need to actually keep track of something else on our inventory account too, which is not just the sum. Of, uh, of units going in, but also the average cost per unit equals, again, a model's decimal field. And we're going to say max digits equals 10, decimal places equals 2. So, um, as well as keeping track of the sum, we are going to be keeping track of how much the on average they cost. Um, and the reason we're doing this is there's, there's a few different inventory management techniques for keeping track of cost. This is going to be the simplest one. We're going to keep the average cost. So when we make purchases, uh, the average cost is changing depending on our purchase prices. And when we sell, we're going to expense it um, at that price. So that average cost is what we're going to deduct from cost. We'll look at the sales price and that's our, pro our revenue. And we take the difference between them and that's the profit. Um, so uh, if you had another inventory management system in place, like a, a first in, first out uh, cost structure or a last in, first out, um, that's going to be a very different process and a little bit more complicated because you need to keep track of all the batches. Whereas what we're going to do is just we're going to keep track of the average cost and assume that that is the cost uh, per, per unit whenever we sell items. Okay, so enough talking. Let's start doing. So we're not going to really change the code that changes our quantity here. This is actually perfectly fine for what we need. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. What we need to do is add a slightly different code for when we purchase something and for when we sell it. So the quantity has been adjusted now after this. So let's say if self quantity is less than zero, which is to say if we are reducing the quantity of our inventory, then we know that that's a sale, right? So is sale. So otherwise, we know that it's a purchase. Okay, cool. So what happens when we have, well, let's say a purchase first because a purchase is going to impact 
um, our average uh, uh, cost per unit up here. Okay, well, first let's get the total sum of what the entire value of our inventory is. So we can do that by taking the uh, uh, so total value of purchase is equal to our self quantity times our self cost per unit, like so. All right, so, and it's given me a little grief, so we'll see if that works, but who knows, you know. So, okay, <clears throat> so the total value of the purchase is the quantity times the cost of the unit, and then the total value of remaining is equal to the, uh, so of the pre-existing inventory, is equal to, we're going to do self account sum minus self quantity, so that'll get us the original value again, right, times the self account average per unit. All right. So this is going to get us the value of the pre-existing and the value of purchase. So let's get total value of all. What we're going to do is total value of purchase plus total value of pre-existing. Cool. So now that we know the total value of everything, right, we can find the average cost per unit again. And how do we do that? Well, self-average cost per unit is equal to the total value of all divided by the uh, uh, self-account sum. So we're taking the total value of the whole inventory and dividing it by the new sum. And that will get us the average cost per unit. So great. So now we are basically adjusting the quantity and adjusting the cost per unit if someone makes a purchase. So let's test to see if that works. Okay, just to let you know, it's important to migrate a bit the database. Um, I had some errors from a funky uh, uh, change I had done earlier that were not going through, so I had to uh, wipe it and start again. Uh, it is possible to get in there and change the SQL around if you need to, but yeah, it's just a tutorial, so I can wipe the database. I felt like wiping it. All right, so <clears throat> so we've got in there now our database is migrated. So now we can test to see if uh, how it's going with uh, purchasing to make sure that it's setting the values correctly. And just something I noticed here, I should have copied and pasted instead of not copying and pasting. Often you'll get these bugs that are because uh, if you're like me, you misspelled the variable. No good. So uh, that's been changed. And uh, another little error. It's actually supposed to be self account average cost per unit. Oh, whoops. All right. All right. You can see our widgets here. Uh, average cost per unit is actually editable. So we'll change that right after this. But let's try it out. Let's try buying five units at a cost of $10 each. Save. All right. Great, we got a sum of five and an average cost of 10. Let's try five more units at $5 each. Great, that seems to be working. So 10 times 750 is 75. 10 times five is 50. Five times five is 25, 75. Looks good to me. All right, so we're gonna add one more field, profit or loss is going to tell us the total profit or loss of this transaction and it's only going to occur on sales so while it is uh, still a decimal field it has the possibility to be null and blank because <clears throat> it might not be uh, occurring especially on purchases and then <clears throat> we can do a lot of funky things you probably would want to know profit and loss over time periods but we're not going to do that this one we're just going to do the overall profit and loss of the inventory account 
we can advance it a little bit further next time maybe uh, if that's where people want to take it so please leave comments if you have any ideas but for now we're just gonna have a simple system where it's gonna have the total profit or loss equals models decimal field max digits 10 decimal place to default equals decimal zero great all right so let's go into the admin panel and we're going to uh, change the read only fields to not only to sum, uh, but what else we got here. So average cost per unit. We don't want them being able to change that around either. And we also don't want them changing around the total profit and loss. These are all calculated fields. Okay, so we'll do one more. Um, make a migrations. <clears throat> And then we're going to migrate. Let's assume this goes well. Yes. Okay. Now let's take a little look. We're also going to add a read only field here just so it is profit or loss. I think that's what it's called. And yes, profit or loss. Okay. So that'll come up as read only as well. Okay. So in this sale, the cost average isn't going to change, the average cost per unit because we're selling it at that cost, we just need to know as well uh, uh, how much uh, profit we're going to make from it. So let's do that here. So because the logic for changing the quantity is already up here, because we're not a changing the average uh, price here, really all we need to do is update the profit and loss. So we'll do that by doing profit or loss is equal to the self quantity times the self cost per unit minus self quantity times uh, self, uh, so it's actually not this, it's the self account average cost per unit. So uh, we take the quantity multiplied by the cost, uh, or the sale price, I guess you could say, and take the quantity and take the average cost, and that gives us what the profit or loss is. Fantastic. And then what we're going to want to do is take the account and take profit, what is it called? Total profit and loss. Profit. Uh, you know what? Copy paste. I keep saying it, but I don't do it. All right. Copy and paste. A total profit and loss plus equals self profit and loss. And that should do it. So if it's a loss, it'll subtract. If it's a gain, it won't. It will add uh, rather than subtract. So let's see if this is working because this seems like a system that is intact and should work. Oh, and one little mistake. I was realizing this is a negative quantity because uh, it's a sale. So we've got to make sure to reverse it into a positive quantity by doing a little negative sign ahead of it. Okay, so we had five at 10, five at five, which means our average cost is 750 a unit. So let's sell five of them at $15 right and it's a sale so we have to put a negative but let's see what happens excellent we have the sale at 15 uh, we take 5 times 15 is a number is 75 uh, and then we subtract from the average of 5 times 750 and basically we get a total profit of 3750 which is right here Awesome. All good. Now we just need to make some slight changes. You see here, if we delete it, it's not going to update everything we've just done. So let's just do some quick changes to the delete function and then we'll be done. Because we're getting down to the last nubs of the YouTube video, I've entered it now um, and here it is. So pause the video and take a look if you want to look at the logic. Um, but it's very similar to this logic. It's basically reverses it out. So let's see what happens Okay, moment of truth. Let's take this transaction and delete it. What should happen is we should drop the profit and loss uh, We should uh, It won't impact the average cost per unit because it's a purchase. So let's get rid of it and see what happens The sum will increase Perfect sum increased total profit and loss gone average units stayed the same see what happens if we delete this transaction it should be cost per unit should go to 10 uh, so forth all right 
oops, little error there. So we're just going to do this and do this minus self quantity. And now it should work. So pause the video here and this is the right code. Moment of truth.